Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this series, we're going to talk about oscillations and simple harmonic motion. We're going to look into the basics of oscillation, what the new terms are, and how does a wave work. So let's start off with uh, a few definitions. So, oscillation. What is an oscillation? It's basically the repeated movement uh, of any object from side to side with respect to the equilibrium. Meaning, meaning, if you have a bob, let's say I draw a bob over here. Right, I draw a bob over here and this is equilibrium. Meaning, at this, at this point, it is right in the middle and it has maximum velocity. Meaning, if you release the bob in this position, it will have velocity zero. When it reaches in this position, or reaches this position, it is going to have V max, because it will have maximum kinetic energy. And then it will again reach this position and will have V is equals to zero or velocity zero. So we can say this middle ground is the is the equilibrium because it's a exact middle position where the displacement is zero from this equilibrium. Here the displacement is maximum, here the displacement is maximum. So what is the definition of oscillation? Oscillation, repeated back and forth movement on either side of any equilibrium position. So if an object is moving back and forth from an equilibrium position, it will be known as an oscillation. Great. Next, we have oscillator. What is an oscillator? Oscillator is nothing but the object that is oscillating. So if any object is oscillating back and forth, that object will be known as the oscillator. All right. The object that oscillates and demonstrates principle of oscillation. Great. What is the principle of oscillation? It's nothing but the period periodic change of any measure. Meaning, what does periodic mean? You have learned about time period, right? Time period is basically how long it takes, how long it takes um, time for one oscillation. So, what does periodic change mean? After every certain period or if every certain time period, the motion changes. So, if after this one entire period, it will again start moving in this direction. So let's say, let's say an object was over here, it goes around, goes around and comes back to this exact position. In that case, one period is done. Then again, it will start another period. So periodically, the object is moving in, let's say, in this case, circle. So there is a periodical change of a measure. In this case, it's moving in circles. So um, what is an oscillator? The object that oscillates and demonstrates principles of oscillation. Great. Now, what are the properties of an oscillation? There are a few things which you are supposed to be known to when you're talking about an oscillation. The first thing is displacement. So what is displacement? Let's say an object is oscillating. I'll draw it over here. Let's say an object is oscillating. This yellow object is oscillating from equilibrium, which let's say is this. This is equilibrium. So it's moving up, coming back, moving down, and then coming back to the equilibrium, completing one period. So, what is the displacement? Let's say I pull this object up to this new position. What will be the displacement? This is the del x or displacement of the object. All right. So, the change in distance from equilibrium is known as the displacement. So, the distance of the oscillator from equilibrium will be known as, will be known as, the displacement. Great. 
So now we know what displacement is in cases of oscillation. Next up, we have amplitude. What is amplitude and what is X naught? You will see this in a lot of books, in a lot of question papers as well. So we denote displacement with X, meaning the change in value of distance. That is known as X. What is amplitude and what is X naught? X naught is basically the maximum displacement. So if I draw a wave, let's say this wave, this is the trajectory of an oscillation, meaning the object, this object goes up, comes back down. So goes up, comes back down, and then goes down, comes back up to equilibrium. That is the motion of the um, object or bob, whatever you want to call it. So in this case, in this case, what is the amplitude or X naught or maximum displacement? In this case, the maximum displacement is going to be, is going to be this height. Where? Where? You will find the maximum dis uh, distance between the equilibrium and the height of the curve. This is X naught. What does X naught mean? It's basically maximum displacement or amplitude. So don't get confused in if in uh, any equation you see X naught instead of amplitude. It, it's simply um, the amplitude in a different numerical animal. All right, so we know X naught is the same as amplitude, right? So we can say X naught is amplitude. And if we want to define amplitude, it is the maximum displacement of the oscillator from the equilibrium position. We already showed a graph. So you can um, find out or figure out the amplitude from a displacement time graph. If this axis is displacement or it's denoted as X, and if this is time per second meter, from this curve, if you have a graph, you will be able to find out the amplitude by finding the maximum displacement from equilibrium. Great. So you know what uh, amplitude is. Next, you have angular frequency or omega. What is angular frequency? From circular motion, you must always, uh, sorry, you must already know about um, what angular velocities or what angular speed is. What is angular speed? Rate of change of angular displacement. Angular frequency is the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. Basically, why don't they say angular frequency? They're uh, trying to explain the same thing in terms of oscillation. In oscillation, we are used to the um, term frequency. So what does angular frequency mean? How frequently, how frequently a theta is changing? How frequently a theta is changing? What does that mean? It's the same exact definition as rate of change of angular dis uh, displacement with respect to time. So, if we write it in terms of a formula, we know omega is 2 pi by time period. What is omega? 2 pi by time period from circular motion, meaning how long it takes for the object to travel 2 pi. For one complete oscillation 2 pi, what is the time period? How long does it take? This gives you 2 pi by t. Now, whenever you convert 1 by t, this 1 by t into f, you get 2 pi f. This gives you angular frequency. Frequency why? Because you're introducing f, the variable f. Now, where is it coming from? From 1 by t. You should already know why, uh, how 1 by time period is frequency. If not, I'll still explain. Basically, if an object takes 0.3 seconds to oscillate in a completely one whole oscillation. So how many oscillations will it do in one second? One by 0.3. This gives you the value of frequency. Frequency basically is how many oscillations happen per unit time. In one second, how many uh, full oscillations will happen. 1 by 0.3, you will get a value of 3.333, whatever. So, every one second, you have 3.3 recurring uh, oscillations. Great. 
So this is why they call it angular frequency. Don't get confused. It's the same thing as angular speed. You're just converting one by T into frequency. Nothing else. What is frequency? Number of complete oscillations per unit time. Great. What is time period? Time taken for one complete oscillation. Great. Now you can write um, time period in terms of pi and omega as well. How do you do that? You know time period is 1 by f. You know from this equation that omega is 2 pi f. Therefore, if you make f the subject, you get omega by 2 pi. Great. You get frequency is omega by 2 pi. So you plug in the value omega by 2 pi, omega by 2 pi. And since it is 1 by f, this entire thing reciprocates and becomes 2 pi by omega. So you're doing nothing but um, just putting this entire thing into, sorry, over here. And you're getting 2 pi by omega. Great. So you know time period can be expressed as 1 by f or 2 pi by omega. Great. Now what is phase difference? You will see this in a lot of questions. Um, phase difference is basically how far ahead or how um, far behind another wave or another wave front is compared to um, the initial wave front or let's write it as wave front A and wave front uh, B. So in this case, we can write it like this. So I'll denote it as B. Okay, so in this case, how far in front is wave front A? If you notice, it is ahead by 180 degrees or pi rad. It is ahead by 180 degrees or pi rad. Therefore, the phase difference is nothing but pi radians or 180 degrees. It's basically how far ahead or how far behind another wave is with respect to the other wave. So, how far behind is B with respect to A? Or how far in front is A with respect to B? So, it's the difference between the two wave fronts or the two waves. Great. So, phase difference is the measure of how uh, far an oscillation is in front or behind another oscill uh, oscillation. Now, phase difference can be measured in uh, radians like I just did, pi or 1 in degrees. Or, or it can be measured in fractions of a cycle. What does that mean? So, if I go back to the initial example and draw the oscillation. Great. This one. So, how far in front is A with respect to B? Half a cycle. Half a cycle. Both have the same amplitude, same frequency, same time period uh, and everything. So, in this case, A, wave front A is only ahead by half a cycle. Because you can already see, you can already see the difference between the difference between this wave, this wave is starting over here and this wave is starting over here. So the difference uh, in the distance between them or the angle between them, if I am drawing it displacement against theta, the difference between the two cycle is only half the cycle or pi radians like over here. So if you want to describe it, or denoted as a fraction, you can say that A, wave A, is in front by half a cycle. Great. Since the difference between the two waves is only half a cycle. Next up, we can look into simple harmonic motion, what it means, and uh, we'll look into the derivation of it. Right. 